Hello, welcome to the bird watching channel. This is part three of a four part series about ruby throated hummingbirds. We'll be talking about the threats and predators that hummingbirds deal with. I am your host and fellow bird watcher, Sharon Sorensen. Only about 20% of hummingbirds survive their first year. And for those of us who love hummers, we have to wonder what happened to that other 80%? What obstacles and threats and predators do they face that cut their survival rate so drastically? Well, there are 10 top causes of life loss. And it begins at the very beginning with egg predation. There are always critters that would like an egg for lunch. Then there are late cold snaps that sometimes cause eggs to become infertile or perhaps the female to lose her life. There's always nestling predation because just like egg predation, there are critters that would like to have a nestling for lunch or better yet, offer that protein-rich nestling to their own nestlings. And then there's nestling competition. Most often, ruby-throated hummingbirds lay two eggs. And sometimes, one nestling is much stronger than the other and will actually toss the weaker one out of the nest. Then there's the fledgling risk when the birds leave the nest they're often awkward flyers, and they're clumsy with things, and maybe they simply are subject to predation at that point. Severe weather can actually kill hummingbirds. Just think about a hailstone hitting a hummingbird. And sometimes starvation becomes the issue, where they just haven't learned how to feed well, or they don't know how to catch bugs yet, but mom's no longer feeding them. And then there is the migration stress, that death-defying trip that they make from the coast of Florida all the way across the Gulf of Mexico to Central America and all the things that they face along the way. And then who knows what winter territory risks they face? What happens when they're in Costa Rica? We really don't know that much about what happens. And then if they haven't faced enough already, they've got to migrate back and face those same hurdles once again. So given all of those top causes of life that we really can't do much about, let's do take a look at the top six hummingbird predators to see if maybe there is something that we might do to help protect them against those predators. We'll start with number six, and that's larger birds. Now, there's not anything we can do about that, because after all, if a crow or a blue jay or a mockingbird decides that a baby hummingbird might be great to feed their own babies, it's simply going to happen if the female hummingbird isn't strong enough to defend her nest. The fifth predator Top, five, top six predators, number five, is cats. And we can do something about that. This is my cat. He's the best bird watcher in the house. But you'll notice he's on the inside of the house looking out through the screen. He's never, ever allowed outside. The fourth predator, number four, ranking number four, is snakes. And you'll see a snake here and a hummingbird nest here. And as I watched that hummingbird nest, there was nothing happening. There was no bird on the nest. There was no bird coming to or from the nest. And then I looked closer at the snake and there were the lumps, probably including mom because snakes are pretty stealthy that way. If you don't believe how stealthy they are, take a look at this one at my own hummingbird feeder right outside my kitchen window. He figured out how to ride the arch of the branch down to land him right on the feeder 
where if any hummingbird came around, he was ready to grab. Number three is spiders, but not what you might think. It's not that spiders poison hummingbirds, but rather, as you'll recall, hummingbirds use spider webs to build their nests. And they often, unfortunately, get tangled in those spider webs. And you know, they always say spider webs are stronger than iron. And so if a female hummingbird gets tangled in the web, it could very well be her demise. This bird, for instance, at the feeder, has spider web attached to her. She obviously is free of it, but I wonder how much she had to struggle to get free. And sometimes this bird's foot is caught in her own nest, tangled in the spider web that she used to attach the nest to the branch. The nest band indicates that she is a nesting female. So the number two predator may really surprise you, and that's frogs and toads. You know, they wait a minute. Hummingbirds aren't around frogs and toads. Well, they can be, and this is one of the things that you and I can do to protect. If you have branches hanging down into and near the water with blossoms on them, and you can see a lot of blossoms lying here on the rocks, and hummingbirds might be coming to those blossoms, and the frogs will take them. I have actually seen frogs with feathers protruding from their mouths. But the number one predator of hummingbirds is the praying mantis. And I know that will come as a surprise to you because we always think of the praying mantis as a good insect. And in many ways it is. But the praying mantis is really clever at positioning itself at the feeder so that the hummingbird will land right in its pincers. I have other pictures that show what happens after the praying mantis captures that hummingbird, but they're way too brutal to show here. So, yep, we've got the top 10 causes of life loss that you and I really can't do much about. And we've taken a look at the top six predators and some of those things we can help at least a little bit so that maybe more than 20% of hummingbirds can survive their first year. It's a rough road they face. It's amazing to me that they survive it at all. It makes me treasure them all the more. So thank you for joining me on this part three about threats and predators. I hope you'll join me for part four, attracting hummingbirds to your yard. Meanwhile, I hope you enjoy your birds and may you always have birds in your binoculars.